Greetings, dear friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We come together, gathering from around the world, bringing the heart, love, and light of our minds together around our group chalice, group hearts, continuing our work, invoking the common good through our group meditation. Today, in the day following the new moon, we meet to bring the fruits of our work throughout the last two weeks, working with energies of Aquarius and Pisces. Our joint effort to reflect and share on the topic of becoming one through the universal waters. This topic was in our group focus since the full moon two weeks ago. And this topic was offered as a result of reflection of our subjective support group, our guardians of the purpose group. Bringing together two themes that in our focus through our work one that we bring through the science of the fixed cross, which Aquarius is part of. Implementing the principle of sharing into all fields of human endeavor. And the theme of right relationship and harmonization that we hold through the science related to the immutable cross, which Pisces is part of. So today we continue our sharing and will offer seed thoughts into the group chalice that we will use to magnetize and radiate as thought forms to inspire and lead humanity towards the new world of brotherhood, freedom, common good. So let us start our work. And I invite Rebecca to sound our statement of purpose, leading us in our work. Thank you. Thank you, Alexandra and everybody. So our purpose in the project that we established at the time of developing the seeding for this work is to support the manifestation of the spiritual plan for our planet through our group conversation and meditation which focuses the power of joint intention for the common well-being of humanity and earth's overall planetary life which also is aimed to enable the recognition and manifestation of spiritual principles in all fields of human life and activity and which also intends to magnetize thought forms of true solutions, supporting practical actions that lead to the true advancement of humanity. And as 
Alexander said um, in this month of Pisces, the Pisces new moon today with our topic of becoming one through the universal etheric waters, we're working with the water element on the mutable cross, which we've been using to explore the topic areas related to harmonization and right relationships. DK tells us that when the soul is becoming more active on the reversing wheel on the mutable cross, the fluidity of Pisces and the undeveloped Gemini gives place to the responsiveness of the personality to soul impression and the consequent stabilizing of the life on the physical plane. In Pisces, he says, we have the fusion or blending of soul and form as far as the man is concerned, producing the manifestation of the incarnated Christ, the completed manifestation of the microcosm. The greater and the lesser polar opposites the human being and God, the microcosm and the macrocosm are brought to their destined expression and manifestation. And the etheric provides always an essential medium. The, the etheric universal waters of communication. The ether of space is the field in and through which the energies from the many originating sources play. It is likewise, the etheric is likewise the medium for the transmission of force to all parts of the human frame and the agent of the indwelling life and consciousness. It relates human being to human being. And in relation to the Christ, it is the carrier of the subtle energies of the sun to humanity. As we seek to precipitate and integrate our thinking around our topic today, let us hold these thoughts in mind and let us begin our group alignment through the naming circle. Over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Rebecca. As we begin our focus today in this new moon meditation, the naming circle unites our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into our group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle, starting with our organizers. And as your name is called, Please unmute yourself, say your name and where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the heart center of the group gathered today as each one of us calls ourselves into this circle. Alexander. Hi, this is Alexander Ilchuk calling in from Brooklyn, New York, United States. Welcome. Rebecca. Hi, everyone. 
It's Rebecca calling in from the east coast of Australia in Queensland. Welcome. Birgitta. Hi, this is Birgitta Rasmussen calling in from Slaleso in Denmark. Welcome. Aneta. This is Annette Lüfter calling in from Soru in Denmark. Welcome. Darcy. Greetings, everyone. This is Darcy calling in from Washington, D.C. area, USA. Welcome. Jillian. Hello, everyone. This is Jillian Douglas from Norfolk, UK. Welcome. Helen. Hello, this is Helen. I'm calling in from uh, UK, near London. Welcome. Irina. Irina Tsurinkova in Belarus, Minsk. Welcome. Karen. I'm Karen Rienhal Ibsen, calling from the northern of Denmark. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Mariana. Hello, this is uh, Mariana calling in from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Welcome. Ruth. Hello, everyone. This is Ruth Dittmore. I'm calling from Corvallis, Oregon, USA. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align, forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose.
Thank you, friends. Continue now uh, ritual. We open in our floor for sharing any impressions that we received through the last two weeks. Some of these impressions already were shared on the quarter moon meetings and then the full moon meeting and uh, some of them you can find on the community impressions board. Uh, the link to the community impressions board in the chat now and uh, we invite you to add uh, your impressions as well or any sources that you would like to share with the group. And uh, I want to remind us the questions that Birgit uh, offered us for reflection, the full moon meditation. These questions, uh, anyway, like a guidance in our sharing process, but the topic is much wider than these questions and um, not limited to them. So the floor is open. Whenever you feel uh, ready to share, please unmute yourself and let us allow a, a moment of silence after each sharing. That's what is shared, being heard, and would bring us to a higher point of synthesis of our understanding of what does it mean to become one through the universal waters. And one more reminder for us as we listen to each other and we listen to silence of the group center. Let us recognize most resonant sharings that could help us to form the seeds that we will offer into the group chalice for our meditation to be magnetized and radiated through our focused intention. Alexander, may I speak or is it to speak? Yes, please, Mariana. Um, so thank you. Uh, I was thinking about a quote, very old quote uh, from Rabelais, uh, which was um, um, a doctor. He said, science without consciousness is the, the, um, the ruin, I think it's the word, is this destruction of the soul. And a physician, um, really a, a guy who studied physics, not a doctor, uh, Basarab Nicolescu, he said, yes, Rabelais is right. Um, we have to have consciousness while we develop uh, our scientific word, work. But if, um, if uh, our consciousness is there, but science is not there, is a problem as well. We need both. I, I, I hope I explain myself uh, clearly. Thank you.
Thank you, Mariana. Welcome, Alexander. Thanks, Mariana. What you said um, brought a bit. Uh, I received a vision of a large swimming pool with a lot of people jumping in and out and playing and jumping in and out in the water, being uh, tousled here and there. And what you said, like you said, it's almost like the two have to come into harmony to calm the waters of the etheric. And we were talking about that earlier. And what came from that vision was only through unified action because if everyone got out of the pool and entered slowly together at the same time you wouldn't have the ripples or you know if everybody exited at the same time and it's not that we all have to be doing the same thing but i think the focus and intention um of course the motivation too but but the intention of moving together in this action, whatever the action is. Again, um, I think the masters talked about um, focusing on specific things, you know, not just in general, but if we all hone our focus into one point, um, it will calm those etheric waters. And then I do think we will see the effect uh, precipitate out into the physical into our physical lives. So I appreciate what you brought forward. So thank you. You're most welcome. Thank you to you. <laughs> this is Annette uh, from Denmark. And I agree, we need to have um, a conscience and uh, uh, the soul, the wisdom um, when we are working with science. Otherwise, we could uh, end in disaster. Um, wisdom is knowledge uh, becoming uh, is, um, an action uh, through uh, uh, motivated uh, from from love, and we need to have that uh, in the science. We also need to have knowledge in our um, intuitions and inspirations, uh, so we do don't. Um, um believe everything we have to um to back it up with with uh, what we know uh through science and i also thought about this word universal etheric waters um Is it from the buddhic plane we are talking here? Um, the cosmic uh, physical plane um, is not a principle, we are told uh, from DK. So when you are talking about uh, the cosmic um, astral plane then you're talking about the buddhic plane <laughs> if you understand and we need to have uh, contact with our soul to get that high and that is also what we're talking about here becoming one and pisces um the symbol of pisces is the two fishes uh the symbol of soul and personality linked together 
um, and um, I believe to become uh, to to work in these high etheric waters, we need a group consciousness, um, a high uh, consciousness uh, field. Um, uh, that you possibly only can get uh, in in a group, and um, you need to get above uh, um, the the um, lower mental plane, where you can get the intuition and inspiration. Um, yeah, I think I stop here. Thank you. I was reading about in telepathy this week um, the R for ethers. If we're awake, are influenced by and resonating with the four cosmic ethers. So we're linking with our highest hardic or, or spiritual plane, the atmic, the uh, buddhic, and the higher mental. And our four ethers will resonate with those four cosmic ethers. But in our more usual um, level of consciousness, the etheric is controlled by outside influences in, in the world by the, the um, dense physical form. So there's something about lifting up to have one's ethers linking with these cosmic ethers. And the other thing that, that struck me was that the, the prana which flows through the etheric is the life thread of Sanat Kumara. And I found that quite an impressive idea. Sorry about the screeching. Thank you. I think it might be important to mention also that, um, as you're all saying, the focus needs to be um, through higher energies um, and allow the uh, material, more material aspects to um, work out as they should on their own, not to be too concerned with the material aspect. Um, um, I know that in the past, I've forgotten that. And, um, you know, to, to keep the energies high and I've been, been focused on something um, and suddenly the, uh, say, something material like going to the store and suddenly everyone, it seems, in the world is coming to the store at the same time. Um, where, and I have to dissipate that energy to make it uh, return to its regular rhythms and um, and not and make sure that um, the purpose I'm I'm connecting with a higher purpose and not when I focus that strongly and not with some sort of material 
material goal. Um, I don't know if any of you have had that experience, but uh, keeping that energy raised and uh, working together um, on uh, the abstract goals or the uh, goals in the higher energies is important. Um, thank you. This is Annette. Um, I don't know if what you say is the same as I have experienced, but uh, often when I get home from uh, um, shops and uh, um, many people, then I get very, very tired um, because I'm somehow drained from energy. So um lately i've um, made a a simple um meditation i have read in 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 the book from um uh, the norwegian uh, princess i've got forgotten her name but it's it's a short meditation where you um visualize a magnet before you and this magnet uh, draw all others energy from yourself to the magnet and then you ask your um guiding angel to to clean the magnet and return the energy to the uh, where the it belongs and then you take a new magnet and take um, all your own energy back to the magnet uh, so that others have taken and uh, you ask the, the guiding soul uh, to to clean it and send it back to yourself um, so that your energy is restored um, this has helped me to regain my energy uh, after being with many people, um, I'm not sure that it's, it's the same that you were talking about, Lynn, but that's my experience. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, this week has been uh, what, what's been in my mind when I wake up in the morning has been that um, um, a, a new a new thing that came through to me, I guess during the night, um, that um, that I'm trying, and maybe some of you can tell me whether you think it's it's a, a, a positive thing. It seems positive. Um, it came to me that. Um, the people I interact with, I think this is similar to what you were saying, the people I interact with, um, I should put them um, with me in in the chalice. I should see myself in our chalice and I should put these others in with me in that chalice when I'm interacting. And um, that that is a, a technique that might accomplish some of the things we're trying to accomplish, even though it seems like on such a small scale, um, maybe it's a larger scale than I can imagine in its consequences, but uh, it seems like a technique that might be worth worth looking at in in um, helping, helping us all um, dealing with the universal etheric water and helping us all become more one. It's just that visualizing others that, like I say, I'm interacting with in our group. I hope I'm not treading on anybody's toes doing that. Thanks. I like this idea very much as Mariana is the second question. Um, in yoga, we used to visualize a lot um, and we try to imagine um, 
first people that are close to us and we can um, put them with us in a chalice, then people who we know but that are not so close and then people who we dislike but that we forgive and that we are able to uh, introduce with us in the chalice. I mean, that is like um, a yogi meditation. Thank you. So what I am uh, understand is that uh, uh, you are lifting uh, others' uh, energy level uh, in this way. And I have found uh, myself uh, when I am in a, a, a group and the energy level is somehow how, uh, um, down, uh, people are getting tired, then I can like we do here in 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 uh, when we start the group work we are sending love uh, energy from heart to heart and and uh, mind to mind then i try to do that in silence uh, in the group i'm in and thereby lifting the uh, energy level and suddenly um um people are more alert uh, in the group um so that is somehow uh, the same uh, with another method thank you Rebecca, it's interesting, or that's probably too small a word, but how fertile the image of the chalice and the reality of the chalice is. And um, I feel it as a vessel for receiving and giving um, and having a strong radiatory quality that um, can touch people. Um, through radiance and I guess lift energies like you're all saying in that way. Um, and just in relation to what uh, Mariana said at the beginning about the need for consciousness and science to work together and then what Helen said about the, the lower ethers and the higher ethers, I have a few paragraphs here from a book that I'm reading um, about the grail, the grail streamings and um, again the, the um, archetype of the vessel of receiving and giving vessel. Um, and there's just a couple of short paragraphs about the ether body, which I'd like to place in our chalice now. The ether body is the instrument of our whole life of thought. The intellectuality of our own era has up to now gradually dried and hardened this body as it has dried and hardened the physical one, but it has at the same time caused it to evolve towards a certain independence. 
once we have unfolded the faculty of thinking our own thoughts, our thinking is no longer limited to and by our sense impressions and the outer world. The world of thought can now embrace other worlds and particularly if those worlds include the moral and the aesthetic, the ether body slowly embarks on a process of loosening which can bring it eventually to actual perception in those other worlds. And I guess I feel like this is part of um, what the processes that would question one that need to take place in our consciousness to be able to become one with the etheric and with the those energies um, to develop this capacity to perceive the subtle much more than we have at the moment and much more than our current science does yet. It seems as if in doing that exercise um, of bringing, um, bringing others, even sometimes other things like pets or animals, bringing it within the chalice, it seems at the same time to be expanding my own energy body, my own aura in some way. Uh, it's been an interesting exercise to do. Um, Lynn again. Thank I don't know whether I can be heard, but uh, my sound cut off in the middle of that. Um, I'm having trouble with this laptop. It overheats on Zoom. So maybe someone could just let me know, please. Thanks. Uh, yes, we can uh, hear yes, you. We can hear you. Yes. But I, oh. I believe, Lynn, we couldn't hear you what you were saying before that you cut off. Oh, well, yes, yeah, thanks. But but yeah, please proceed, Julian. Um, I was just uh, going to say on the third question, a rather a simple idea that when we become one, there will be an end to the wars and conflict in the world because one usually doesn't fight oneself. And also we will maybe start treating our earth and the animal and vegetable and mineral kingdoms more in line with how Mother Earth would wish us to. Thank you. Going to the first, first, first question, 
question. There is an echo. Um, I think we'll be able to at last develop ourselves together. And that will be so beautiful. I don't know if I will see it, but uh, sure that we, we have peace on earth, then we will have much better conditions to develop. Because uh, while in conflict, part of us has the possibility to, to develop, but all the countries that are uh, experiencing war by now, um, are not able to concentrate in raising level at all. They are just in a survival mode. So, and uh, also the people who are starving and because we need conditions, we need peace to develop ourselves and we need a, a series of conditions. So um, it's, peace is not the end. Uh, it's not like, well, we become one and that's over. I think we become become one and we, we begin and we can start. Thank you. I'm really interested in what Gillian said about war and how you don't usually fight yourself. And I have actually found that I do fight myself in many ways. And um, I sort of interpret that as the, the battle of Scorpio. And I was just recently in a conversation with someone and we were talking about how this battle that takes place within ourselves and the unconsciousness and um, inability to undertake that battle well is part of what allows war to still be on our planet because um, those forces that are getting expressed through war are on a greater scale the the unresolved battles that are within ourselves between our parts that don't support the life of light and the light that wants to get expressed and be able to um, come into balance in a way that brings a wholeness to life. I think we all need to achieve soul consciousness to be able to join as one and get into the etheric uh, waters where we where we can make more progress and the group needs to do it as a whole and also as the soul is each soul is part of the universal soul i think that bodes well for that um chief uh, peace can be achieved Whilst uh, people were speaking earlier, I was reminded of DK's um, visualization of the protective wheel of fire, which is about radiating love in a wheel all of, around you, outward. And I think this is connected with, with oneness that 
if you can radiate far enough, you, you do in fact embrace everything within that protective wheel. And then I, I was thinking about the, the chalice and this idea of bringing people into the chalice. And I was thinking of this, this balance between bringing into the love be safe in the, in the chalice, if you'd like to see it as the boat taking us over the waters. And, and this radiation also to embrace outwards. So you've got this, this balance between the loving inward and loving outward. And I, I just feel that, that that love element is so important in the becoming one. Okay. Somehow it's not very easy for me to relate to this topic. It's um... As I share it at the quarter moon meeting, it's, it seems to be such a high call. And uh, not that easy to um, relate it to the immediate need and uh, of, the, of the common good. And yet, it is. Because we 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 talked uh, today that it's how do we bring different conflicting interests and opinions and views uh, together and how we uh, find the harmony and it's uh, that's actually a very practical aspect for this topic so that's um, in a way that's a the biggest challenge that we face now and will be facing in the coming years and probably decades that we as humanity who have to learn how to actually come to harmony through conflict because we know that conflict is an intrinsic uh, part of the human uh, constitution that's who we are the fourth kingdom is to uh, vibrates on the fourth ray and in a way it's a, it's a, like an engine of uh, our evolution our inner conflicts make us move forward searching the way out of our karmic challenges the conflicts between tribes and nations uh, is an expression of that search for harmony and i think as closer we come to the year 25 when we know the fourth ray will come more strongly into expression that search for harmony will become more and more um, strong in humanity. And therefore, the developing the skills that help us to overcome the resultant conflict that's, that search for harmony creates uh, are more and more in the uh, in need it's almost like a survival mechanism that we 
uh, need to develop as soon as possible, how we overcome, uh, not the right word probably overcome, but how we uh, bring the conflicts into harmonization. That's become uh, task number one uh, for all humanity. And first of all, for the most for uh, advanced part of humanity whom we uh, happen to attribute ourselves to as the world servers, as uh, those who have capacity to shift above the lower uh, uh, mental level and try to see uh, uh, from the higher plane and try to get the vision and try to use intuition and uh, overcoming those uh, lower obstacles. And so one uh, image that comes to me in terms of one of the ways how we do this is that coming back to our topic, becoming one through the universal waters, is that if we think about humanities, we're uh an organism so in a way the world service or uh, intellig even intelligentsia have capacity to um be function as a brain in human organism and uh the more neuron connections uh, we know that the more neuron connections in the brain are the more cognitively developed the uh, person is so in a way we can create those neuron connections neuron paths within the brain and in a way what we that's what we do and uh, by creating those multiple neuron paths we help humanity to shift to higher cognitive level as 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 a as one organism as one unit as one uh as one and uh, uh so that's the pract practical level of that of uh, building our paths that connect to us in etheric waters in the in the level of uh multiple levels not just uh etheric connections but creating those multiple channels of communications between and among us and whoever we can co-resonate with and creating different ventures uh for that so that's our work of helping humanity to move a little bit higher on that collective cognitive level and overcoming conflicts, bringing them to harmony. Alexander, may I speak? Of course. So uh, I very much agree with you and I'm glad you bring that to the inner conflict and how we solve it and reach um, new cognitive levels. What helped me out is to learn how to dialogue with everybody everywhere. And um, it is very difficult sometimes to dialogue. And I think the that was what I meant when I started, when I said we need knowledge as well. We need love, yes, we need to lift our consciousness as high as we can. But we need also to con concrete actions to learn to dialogue. And um, it's not easy every... It, it's not easy all the time. I mean, sometimes uh, you are in front of people we you like and you talk easily, but sometimes 
it doesn't match and um, and you're in bed and you don't say what you think and um, so to learn to dialogue it's to learn to give yourself permission to interact with different opinions and sometimes to say no thank you i disagree because this and that and uh, I think we should not split. I think we should go together because of this and that. And uh, uh, we need to learn to to have good arguments and uh, to prove what we mean, and not only to vibrate love. Because uh, a lot of religious people were persecuted and died. Uh, while they were so loving, but they were not able to to prove to demonstrate their point. And on the other hand, another a lot of scientific people died as well because there was not love enough. So again, we we need both reason and faith. Um, we need uh, and that will help us to solve our inner conflicts, to dialogue with ourselves, but to dialogue with the different opinions is very important too. So um, then we will uh, open the new channels, Alexandra. You, you were, to I, I saw the image of a big brain. <laughs> uh, 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 a strong brain as a group brain <laughs> and uh, connected and it was very beautiful this image uh, because uh, we need to be concrete as well thank you Yeah, I was, thank you for sharing everybody that everybody has said so many profound and wonderful things and so true, so true. Um, I can't help but keep thinking that our work as um, fifth root race, again, we're trying to get past that comma manas and, and into the higher uh, mental worlds and and bring in booty, uh, the Buddhic love and wisdom and all that. Um, I keep it keeps coming to me that we, as a whole, as humanity as a whole, especially through groups, we need to learn how to shift our perspective. Um, we still sometimes fall back into that trap of looking at a problem and trying to solve the problem um, as the problem as opposed to looking at what's happening, a problem or a situation or whatever, uh, ourself, even a fault in ourself. And I keep thinking of Jesus and how he performed miracles. He didn't think about how he should go about performing the miracle. He just visualized the highest outcome and put all his thought emotion and that type of thing towards that and i think once humanity starts to learn i don't want to say that trick but it kind of is a little bit of a magic seven three magic uh, because energy follows thought and we're learning that through quantum uh, mechanics and quantum physics and that but um when we start as a group to not look we we see a problem but don't say okay what should we do to solve we just say okay this is the problem what's the highest outcome what is the most perfect outcome that we can all visualize i don't care if we're on the left on the right up or down or science or not science religion it doesn't matter what's the most perfect outcome we can see 
what would we like to visualize? If we were making a movie, what would the ending look like? And then everybody start to put their energy and focus, the one pointed focus towards that visualization. And I think um, we're at that precipice now because we, we realize that that's what we have to do, but we're still falling back down into the old patterns. And it just comes with, I think, part of the birthing of this process. But um, I can't help but just keep thinking, you know, the energy follows thought. And how do we achieve things differently now that we know certain things through the Aquarian, you know, through the knowing and the wisdom that we've earned through all these, these lifetimes and root races and everything. Yes, I think sometimes uh, we're programmed to go for the negative before we go for the positive, or maybe it's just me. And I think if we could, as you suggest, look on the positive side of things rather than the negative, things would move on in the right direction more quickly. I feel the need to add just one thing to all those good thoughts. And that's just that I think when we ask for the best possible outcome, we always need to leave it open for that best possible outcome to be defined by the uh, um, by God or by higher consciousness. We need to leave that opening that um, we can put in wonderful ideas like we always do, but it has to finally be the divine uh, that determines what that outcome should be, um, divine will. Yes, thank you, Lynn. Not our will by thy be done. I also think we need to use the seven rays more uh, to understand each other better, uh, the positive and negative aspects of each ray, and, and be better to, to understand um, that perhaps uh, we are both right. Uh, we, not one have, has the right solutions. Because we are toward, uh, going towards a mountain, towards the same truth. But we, uh, uh, up the mountains, we are a different place and have a different view. And therefore, we can, got, uh, we can have um, um, we can both have um, the truth seen from our side. And um, this is important when we um, want to solve uh, conflicts to see above. The, the fourth ray is al always um, to get above the two uh, uh, sides of the conflicts and to find the golden truth in the middle uh, above the, the two points of view um and and i th i think the race is is uh, very important in this uh, uh, quest to understand each other thank you i felt like um when i would wake up and 
um, be asked to um, incorporate um, people within our chalice that I interacted with or um, whatever beings. I asked, uh, I felt like I was being asked not only to bring in, but to expand my boundaries, the boundaries of my perceptions. Um, when I did bring in, I felt like that made my world larger. I think that's really beautiful in um, and relating it to what Helen was saying, thoughts that are coming to me, um, this idea of drawing in and radiation and the balance between them. Um, it's the expansion that we need to draw people in. Um, there's a kind of expansion that can also take place with um, learning to listen and be quiescent and to um, hear another and put our own opinion aside um, is all part of the expansion but then the idea of radiation seems very concentrated um, in the middle the point in the middle and I guess that's a bit abstract, but um, maybe a bit like um, Annette's magnet, you know, there's this point of concentration and, and the two things have to work together, but they're both a part of love. And I think the um, ability to love is very practical um, and is involved with all of these things that we're talking about. Um, I, I feel some people, some of the conversation has suggested that love is a passive quality perhaps, but it seems like a very, very active quality to me. And that's expressed in this idea of expanding one's world through drawing in another. And also in concentrating oneself to be able to radiate to another. As Annetta was saying, she sometimes does in meetings where, where people's energy is lagging. So I think there's a lot to think about in what the qualities of love are and how they, um, the, what we need to do to be able to cultivate them and bring them into our efforts at dialogue and communication on all levels. That reminds me that Pisces is a sign of a savior and sign that deeply related to the Christ. And so love is the only way how to embrace everything and to take all the pains of the world into your heart and, and to synthesize everyone and everything 
Thank you, Rebecca. Absolutely. Considering the time, I suggest we just take a pause and prepare ourselves for the meditation that will, Birgit will take us into. And while holding this moment of silence, let's recognize the most resonant seeds that we can offer to the chalice to be magnetized and radiated through our meditation. And Birgit, whenever you feel the moment is right to take us into meditation. the group work as one building one giant brain let us breathe love together Standing in the flame of our group heart. And through our group heart, we align with Christ, the heart of the hierarchy. We sense the flow of purifying and healing divine love as we sound the mantra of unification. The souls of all are one and we are one with them. We seek to love, not hate. We seek to serve and not exact your service. We seek to heal, not hurt. Let pain bring you be void of light and love. Let the soul control the outer form and life and all events. And bring to light the love that underlies the happenings of the time. Let vision come and insight. Let the future stand revealed. Let inner union demonstrate and outer cleavages be gone. Let love prevail. Let all people love.
Visualize the glowing beauty of the chalice, which our work together feeds and fills. Our work is colored by Pisces in this new moon. Pisces calls for spiritual responsibility and world saviors. Pisces brings in the light of the world, the light that reveals the light of life itself and ends forever the darkness of matter. May we see harmony and equilibrium. Yes, let us bring our seek thoughts. Into sound if we wish, and if we don't wish, we also honor those who choose not to speak, but who silently offer their formulated seats into the chalice. Let's share our group seats, seat thoughts. Love be the power of humanity. May each esoteric group take synthesis to the greatest point it can. All the various things we've spoken about today exist in exquisite atonement in our souls, in our soul. Let the group affirm the will as an aspect of the law 
of sacrifice. Reawakening the reason of our brotherhood as we tread the mutable cross together through detachment and divine unification, materializing Christ consciousness on all levels of the etheric waters. May we take care of one another and of ourselves. Through caring dialogue, we are purified into the sacrificial love which sows and expands the unifying light in the earth. We tread the path, learning and showing it to others, how creatively solve conflicts, come into harmony. We sense the resonance of our combined seats 
filling the chalice and visualizing its radiant light, enhancing the beauty and love of its tone as it flows forward into the world, touching all receptive hearts and minds, bringing the radiating living light into humanity. And let us seal our meditative work together with the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the human minds. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into human hearts. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all little human wills, the purpose which the masters know and serve. The agenda which we call humanity, let the plan of love and light work out and may seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Ooh. Ooh. Mm -hmm.